Today's story is Saul's conversion on the road to Damascus, and it comes from the ninth chapter of Acts, verses 1 through 19. We continue today to study the scriptures and the stories of faith passed down to us through the generations. As Christians, we respect the Old Testament stories and traditions, but base our faith and traditions primarily on the New Testament. The New Testament begins with the Gospels and is followed by the book of Acts, which tells us the beginnings of the early church, its trials, and its triumphs. One of the trials faced by the early church was persecution by the Pharisees and the Romans. Because, fo because followers of the way, as early Christians called themselves, because they, were, because they followed the ways of Jesus, were not an established religion, they were considered rebellious to the law, and many were thrown in jail or even killed for, for proclaiming their belief in Jesus' teachings. One such man who sought out followers of the way to imprison them was Saul. He continued to persecute the followers of the way, going from home to home and dragging those who he followed, who he found to be followers of the way and putting them in prison. He went to the high priest asking for letters to the synagogues in Damascus so that if he found any followers of the way, he had permission to take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. He, along with some of the others, traveled to Damascus. As they were traveling, a great light from heaven flashed around Saul and he fell to the ground. A voice from heaven asked him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Saul responded by asking, who are you, Lord? And the voice replied, I am Jesus, who you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. Those who traveled with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound but did not see anyone. When Saul got up from the ground, he opened his eyes and found that he could not see. So the group led him down the road to Damascus, to the house of Judas on Straight Street. He stayed in the house fasting, not eating or drinking anything, and praying to God for three days. In Damascus, there was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord came to him in a vision, calling him by name, Ananias. And Ananias replied, Yes, Lord. The Lord told him to go to the house of Judas and ask for the man from Tarsus named Saul, who would be praying. And Ananias was told to place his hands on Saul to restore his sight. Ananias hesitated and told the Lord, I have heard of this man and all the harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. He has come here with authority from your priest to arrest all who call on your name. The Lord told Ananias, go. 
This man is my chosen instrument to carry my name before the Gentiles and, the, and their kings and before the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. So Ananias went to Saul and placing his hands on him, told him, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who you met on the road, sent me to you so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he could see again. He got up from his time of fasting and prayer and was baptized. What would you do if you were suddenly blinded and unable to see? How do you think you would feel? Why do you think Ananias did not want to do as the Lord asked him to do in helping Saul? Have you ever had something similar to scales coming off your eyes in regards to better understanding your faith? What did that look like? Why do you think it is important for us to know that some need those sort of, of experiences to better understand God?